Data Processing Concepts The first thing to understand when it comes to data processing is understanding the term big data. So what is big data? Big data started out as a problem that needed an innovative solution. As we became technologically advanced, the data we generated increased and the rate at which we could process it couldn't keep up with the rate at which we produced it. That is where the term big data was born. When people talk about big data, they're actually talking about either a massive data set or the technology behind handling those data sets. We're more concerned with the former, the big data sets. But that's not all big data is about. There's more that defines exactly what big data is. There are three V's with which you can properly define big data. The first one is volume. Here we're talking about the size of the information being managed by the data processing systems. The second V is velocity. This is defined as the rate at which you can process data. That means you're seeing how quickly the system can ingest, analyze, and visualize or use the data that it is being fed. Last comes variety. This is how varied your data is. Data comes in all shapes and sizes, and there's a lot of different formats, qualities, and sources when it comes to data. Now let's take a look at the way the data is stored. The first method of storage is putting it in a data warehouse. Data warehouses hold structured data. You may remember the term structured data from earlier in this course. Structured data is data that is in some tabular form and each item is identified by some primary identifying key. Relational databases are structured, as you may remember from the overview. Where data warehouses differ is in the way the data is organized. In a relational database, it is done in rows, whereas in data warehouses, it is done in columns. This is to facilitate online analytical processing or OLAP. We're going to be seeing what OLAP is very soon. Data in data warehouses is stored such that it's ready to be consumed at any time. However, the structure of data warehouses is rigid and cannot be changed easily, and even though the data is easier to understand, it's not as up-to-date as it could be. Now let's take a look at data lakes. You can store raw and unstructured data in a data lake. So where you could say that a data warehouse stores the vegetables that are good and clean to be consumed by people, a data lake, by comparison, stores all the vegetables, even the ones that are no good for consumption. The data in a data lake is ready for analysis at all times and is the most up-to-date that it can be. However, you may need some more technical analysis tools to get the job done. Data lakes are flexible, simply due to their non-structured nature. Any new type of data can be added anytime. It's time to take a look at OLTP and OLAP systems. These are both online database systems with the main difference being that one is transactional and the other one is analytical. OLTP systems process a higher number of short transactions, whereas OLAP systems process a smaller number of long transactions. OLTP systems queries run faster, whereas OLAP queries are slower due to their complexity. OLTP systems have normalized data, whereas OLAP ones have denormalized ones. This could go on, so to simplify things, let's look at it this way. In general, OLTP systems are what you would use when the database needs to be modified, and OLAP systems are used when the database needs to be queried. Last comes the elephant in the room that you can see in the center of the screen, called ETL. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. ETL processes are used to take the data from the OLTP system and move it over to the OLAP one. The last thing you need to understand about data processing is batch processing and stream processing. These are both ways in which you can ingest data into your system. The difference comes in the rate at which the data goes in. In batch processing, you send massive chunks of data into the system at given intervals. This is a cheap way of sending data and is often used when there is a large volume of data that needs to be sent. Often you will find that it is also used when the data from legacy systems has to be sent. 
Stream processing, on the other hand, is very different. Data is collected the moment it's generated. This approach is more suited to when near real-time analytics are required and you need to understand what the system is doing as it does it. 